opinion of what they think you should be like, and they stick to it. If you come from a particular background, you've achieved a particular success, mm -hmm. they expect you to be a particular way, and they don't let you be. So they just assume that, you know what? You can say that again. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know what it feels like for people to expect, oh, you're such a TV star, and you're going around with your salubata, maybe yeah. flat slippers, and maybe a pair of shorts, and they're mm -hmm. like, you shouldn't look like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, there was a time that, you know, um, somebody said to me, uh, fashion is something that I do. Mm -hmm. I dress for comfort. <laughs> and that's probably why the loose and the floaty look for st you started with. That's what I started with. Mm -hmm. And um, people said to me, a few people said to me, oh, for like, you know, you're a fashion designer, you should care more, you should, uh, you know, wear longer weaves, or wear weaves. <laughs> You've got nails, lovely hair. Uh, I'm like, but I don't feel comfortable doing that. I, I, my job is to dress other women. Mm -hmm. And my job is to set trends, not to follow it. Mm -hmm. And I'm comfortable being me. And if being me is very, very basic, <laughs> Then take me for who I am. Then take me for who I am. Mm -hmm. Let my. I think maybe one of the reasons I've been able to separate Tiffany Amber from Folake is because I let the, my work do the talking for me. Mm -hmm. And if people are happy with what you do, I mean, there's so many times people will say to me, oh, are you Tiffany Amber? I thought you were so much older. I thought you, ex but you know, the brand is 18 years old. And um, so they expect that. The How do you deal with newcomers in the industry? How do you deal I with I embrace newcomers in the industry because it shows that the industry is growing. And I think there's so many young, talented designers in the industry. I'm just so sad that there's no avenue for them to sell their clothes properly. But luckily, the internet is picking up, mm -hmm. which is something that all of us should really embrace because that's the way forward. And I think um, the, 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 the um, newcomers in the industry. They're younger, mm -hmm. they're more... Well, I mean, you're still young. I mean, it's because you started early. I mean, comparatively. We, okay, I, I want to go back to the beginning of Tiffany Amber. Mm. Was it a deliberate choice to make Tiffany Amber about flowy, about, you know, quiet sensuality? I mean, this, for example, what I'm wearing. I mean, I keep saying this. It's, it's, you know, there's this little bit on top. I call it camouflage. <laughs> you know, I think Tiffany Amber started as an extension of my own personal style. And my own personal style is laid back with a hint of, dare I say, naughtiness? <laughs> <laughs> no, laid back Suggested. with a, it's a, yeah, it's, it doesn't, nothing about it is, is in your face. And then when I start, when the, um, the label, the, the, the name, la the name just, the, the label just, Start really just as an extension of my own personal style. But somebody said you changed the face because um, I remember the young lady, I mean, Tara, for example, who's moving this campaign, one of those moving the campaign, said she remembers being the makeup artist at the very first show 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. A co-hotel, you did the works, makeup. You didn't settle for small measures. No, I don't. You see, fashion industry, a lot of people don't understand it. What when so many people don't understand is you throw a lot of money out the window. And if it lands in the right place, it comes walking right back through your door. Hmm. And from the beginning, I was very, I didn't, I don't, I didn't cut, cut, cut any corners. corners. I just thought I wanted a big fashion show. You know, you throw things in the universe. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, I say universe because it's the best way to put it, to put it and it comes back to you. So re I, I, I've learned that over the period of, over the period of, time that I've been doing, that I've been working on. Um, fashion. I've been working in fashion. I find that I say things sometimes. I don't even know what it means, but I know that I want it. And then over time, you find yourself subconsciously working towards it, and then it comes to pass. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes, I know this is going to sound a bit of um, like a cliche as well. I feel that, always feel that my steps are ordered. I don't think... Uh, has time proven that to you? Over, in every aspect of my life. Nothing is ever a disaster. It's a lesson. Nothing is ever... Every step I take, I think, oh, God is leading me in this direction, mm -hmm. and I'll follow. If every sensibility tells me, in me tells me that it's the right path, mm -hmm. I would follow. I think that's a good time to take a break because it's going to lead me to the conversation about the women of vision mm -hmm. and, and what that has been able to birth. Even, I mean, and this was about two years ago and you started thinking, I must do something differently. I'll be right back with Fola Kekoka of Tiffany Amber, if you don't go away. Mm -hmm.
Yes, welcome back. I'm still in the studios with Falake. I like I'm one of those who still understands how she speaks. It took me time because I realized that when Falake is talking to you, she's moving from one conversation to the other simply because she's thinking ahead of what she's saying. Correct or wrong? Well, I think faster than I speak. <laughs> so <laughs> it's sometimes I find that I, when people are speaking to me, they're like, Falake, you've lost me. I'm like, oh, sorry, where exactly? <laughs> because so you, have you have these dreamy eyes and, you know, it's like you're always dreaming. I, I did say I daydream a lot. <laughs> Is that what happened with the women in vision? This was two years ago. By the way, if you don't know, I'm somewhere in the middle, right in the middle. There are 15 women you sat down and said, I want to do something. What was this about? I wanted to celebrate 15 years of Tiffany Amber, but I didn't want to celebrate it with a party or a show. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do something that would channel another part of me. That, that we didn't know about? That, well, that no, that I don't, yes, I don't, I don't show. You know, since I launched Tiffany Amber, I, I can't tell you how many people send their children to me for mentoring, for internship, mm -hmm. over a period of, maybe during their Christmas holiday, their Easter, not, never, no, not Christmas, summer holiday or Easter. And um, they, these children have grown up knowing Tiffany Amber, because some of them are 18, some of them are in, maybe in their early 20s now. And how many designers have mentored, uh, you know, they've gone through some kind of um, internship at Tiffany, Amber, mm. at Tiffany Amber. And I think that, um, so I thought, what's the best way to, what's the most amazing thing about Tiffany Amber? It's the women that come in. Yeah, they always have a feeling, actually. I remember anybody wears Tiffany Amber dresses, like, you're feeling... Like a, like a goddess. Yes, <laughs> yes. And um, these women, I couldn't, I can't tell you how much they've helped shape who I am today, some of them. And um, I've had the chance, I had the chance to meet so many amazing women from all over Africa. And I thought it was time to share them with the world. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought, so let me do my Tif Women of Vision at Tiffany Amber, the first one. Then every year or two, we'll have, a, you know, I'm trying to create a community of women African women mm -hmm. that can nurture the next set of leaders. Mm -hmm. Because all the women that we chose to work with, they're all leaders in their own field. So they're the whole idea was to, I mean, identify those women, link them up with mentees, and let spread the message, which yes. you've done. But my question is, I mean, this is not news. People would have read about this or known about that. And it's simply not, it's not because I was one of those women, but because I saw in it what you've been able to do beyond that. We did what we did. The show was good. You know, you identified people. It necessarily not, this is not an exhaustive list. No. There are several other inspiring women. Just yes. pick some and use them. Abby? Yes, I mean, yeah, because we're going to pick another set. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to create a virtual community mm -hmm. that, you know, that, you know, so many people can come in. If you're a member of that community, you know, it, it, you, we, we support one another in every way possible. Did that lead to the walk? Because I, I see what you're trying to do. I thought it was just about the photo shoot, I think, marking the anniversary, but you've done other creative things and give back things from it. And one of them was the walk that happened in Lagos in February. I get this During message. the uh, marathon, Lagos. Yeah. Like, uh, well, you know what it is? That was over the Christmas holiday, the mentees from this program, they took me out for dinner, for lunch. I was really touched, about mm -hmm. seven or eight of them. So I said, um, so, what would you guys think is the most amazing thing, amazing thing you did in 2016? And all of them started telling me, you know, well, you know, we did this, or did. And I said, you all should be ashamed of yourself. And I'm ashamed of myself. If you could look in the, look at, look at what, what's happening in the IDP camp, mm -hmm. there are children. You know, Had I, you been there by that time? No, just image. How can I, I, it, I couldn't go because I couldn't even look at the images by that time. So, you know, when you're in, on Instagram and the picture comes up, you do this, mm -hmm. quickly flick it so, no, so you wouldn't have to look at it. And I, that almost puts you on the opposite side of the moral compass. 